Well, yeah, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't really that difficult in many respects because people just kept coming up to us and saying, you know, we've got the same thing happening in our community. And uh, as I was saying at the beginning, you know, people, particularly in Dubrovnik, actually, which came about after doing a screening at a human rights film festival in Zagreb. And then the local people in Dubrovnik said, can you come down and have a look at what's happening here? And so I did and just decided to start filming. It was... I said at the beginning that I had to remortgage the house to make the first film. This one, we had a similar kind of struggle, even though the film, the first film, had got out to, to an audience. It was still only down to people doing crowdfunding um, and, and raising money and awareness of, of our project that allowed us to get to the next stage, really. Um, and, you know, just, just working with some very helpful people in New York as well who helped us with the filming, and Henry, who filmed the... Uh, the uh, Trump interview, he's here tonight as well. And so, you know, it was just a collective effort, but it was important, you know, to, to just, I think, realize that this is happening everywhere and to try and follow that uh, wherever it is, whether it's in the United States, uh, in a wealthy area of, of, of um, the United States, like the Hamptons, or in, in other parts of the world as well. Anthony did a great job of getting at the, you know, those human stories. But we wanted to show, we didn't have, you know, we didn't have to dig very deep to find those stories in a lot of ways, Anthony's saying. So I think we're looking at a kind of a, a bit of a tip of the iceberg sort of story there where, you know, these, these stories are out there. We tried to, you know, get, you know, thanks to Dan uh, Washburn is also here today uh, somewhere who wrote a great book on, on, on golf in China. Um, just to get a, you know, give a flavor that, you know, not only these golf developments and these golf issues are, are common around the world, but also just this, I think this, this whole idea of, uh, of these kinds of developments, whatever they are, uh, you know, that are being catered, really just catering to a very small fraction of that, that 1%, which uh, people here help make famous. It's, I think it is revealing, especially in the second film, uh, just how pervasive uh, the notion of the 99% and the 1% has become uh, in the mindsets of people in this country, but really all around the world. It's this universal symbol now, and I think that, um, especially with respect to golf, it, it makes it so clear and plain and simple for people how absurd uh, the disconnect is. That scene um, where you're talking with the Trump folks, and you mentioned the 99%, it was so strange to hear their response and in this sort of, well, we were out to dinner last night downtown and talking to the people <laughs> at dinner at the table and they would have a different opinion. Um, so there's a kind of huge disconnect that I think your, your film reveals. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's resonated with people all around the world is that there's a, there's a lot that we have in common when it comes to the ways in which these developments are so aggressively and ambitiously pursued. So much water has been allocated, it's just crazy, and, and with all the environmental homework accomplished, um, he still was allocated um, something like 69 million gallons a year of fresh drinking water, and only 7% um, only of that is for potable, for drinking. The rest is to irrigate the course. And, I mean, that's so egregious. With you know, the global water crisis going on, and he's actually just spreading it, not just on the course, but on the roughs. They're watering the dirt roads. I mean, you know, it's just wild. And what is even crazier is that he is paying um, just 7% of what, you know, normal average New Jersey citizens pay 16 times more than what he pays for um, a gallon of water. It's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, it, is a, it is a fact that, it, that, that there's just a, a fraction of the jobs that was promised, and that's what's so, in an area, by the way, in Aberdeenshire, that had 0% unemployment, and the way that the media and everybody came around saying, oh, this is just going to boost the area, it's going to be fantastic. It wasn't an economy on its knees needing saved by Donald Trump, and yet everybody was, was, was won over by that promise. Yeah, and I think, you know, we obviously do have to recognize that, you know, it's not just Donald Trump here, obviously, who's the evil, uh, you know, the evil man in that situation. You know, you know that you have to you have to look at the representatives, uh, you know, of the government. Uh, you know why there wasn't more, you know, frankly, um, voluntary reaction to the to the project uh, initially. Uh, as it wasn't in Brobnik, on the on the on the other hand, they jumped on this project, you know, 
quite early on, and hopefully they can they can stop it. So I, you know, I, I think Donald Trump. I mean, the point is often made. You know, he's a businessman, and it's his job to exaggerate and do all of this kind of thing. And so, um, you know, there are lots of Donald Trumps out there. Every proposal to every council on anything is going to, you know, uh, exaggerate. I mean, we probably exaggerate when we're appealing for funds from people too, you know. So it isn't that just that. It's, it's the people who have to look at this. And of course, the money that some people like Trump have influenced the process. But, you know, I think as societies, we have to have to respond. Well. In, in Bedminster, New Jersey, which is only 35 miles from here, you have a pretty wealthy community, um, sophisticated folks, but you know they turn on the tap, they expect the water to come out. They're, it's it's going to catch up with them. I don't think as much as we try to raise awareness about what's going on, they're really not paying attention. They assume that this resource has been here. Um, it's going to always be there, and it's going to catch up with them. This is um, not... They've got two big PGA uh, tournaments scheduled, um, the women's tournament and then the championship in, in 2022. And suddenly there's going, the community, there's going to be this swell of, you know, what's happened to my water? The wells are running dry because the aquifer has been depleted. It's already in big trouble, but only the 29 residents that live around the golf course are starting to find their wells drying up. But when you bring, when there's, suddenly it's going to affect people and then they're going to be angry and it's way too late because their town sold them out the state sold them out when they allocated all this water and so um it's it's going to catch up so the re that's where it's the resource the water resource it's going to wake people up but too late mm. well, that's a deep one. <laughs> <laughs> um well i think you know people have often asked me when seeing the film how do how do i just stay focused as it were on when you're doing an interview, say for example, with Donald Trump or the mayor, and you know the background, you know what they're being accused of, or, or your job, my job is to try and you know at least put to them the points that the local people are putting to me, and you just have to stay focused on that. I mean, I don't know whether, yeah, you know, there's no evidence to show one way, apart from the mayor of Dubrovnik with his, you know, um, has been found guilty of corruption. I mean. But the, but the point with, with with him is is there are a lot of very very unhappy people about the way he he deals with politics in Dubrovnik, and I just have to keep focused on you know what the local people are thinking. And in Donald Trump's case, I mean, you know, he you just have to I have to anyway just hold at the back of my head the 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 years of incredible dignity that the local people have shown against all the odds and they didn't ask for this fight you know they don't have access to the airwaves and the lawyers that Donald Trump does and yet they've been incredibly dignified and shown huge courage and determination to stand up for their environment and you know Donald Trump just doesn't seem to recognize that and, and there is as Justin was saying a disconnect I mean I, I was you know, shocked to see the, the report from Oxfam showing that um, by 2016, the 1% um, of the world's um, wealthiest people will control more wealth than the other 99% of the world. And that gap seems to be getting bigger and greater. And when Donald Trump Jr. talks about how one shoe is a, a luxury, <laughs> and it just shows this, this, this disconnect between people in that living in that kind of Trump Tower environment and how they just don't seem to be able to, to, to understand what ordinary people are going through. Again, thank you very much.